Hello, I'm Gary Reinhardt for Heart to Heart with Gary Reinhardt, and with me is Aaron Weaver, Vice President of the Historical Society here in Speculator, New York. How are you doing today, Aaron? Hello, Gary. Welcome to the Historical Museum. Yes, we are positioned right here in the museum, hopefully a destination many of my listeners have come to. Uh, we have various things, such as a the Lake Pleasant House muse- uh, exhibit. We have boxing exhibits. We have a nice reed organ. Definitely the right uh, atmosphere to talk about a cemetery tour. Yeah. So, what is a cemetery tour? Well, there's different kinds of cemetery tours. There's the kind that people like to go and get themselves spooked and all that. But most historical societies, when they do cemetery tours, it's more of an educational tour where you go through a cemetery and you learn about the history of the local people who are buried there. All right. Um, And where is this year's cemetery tour? Well, we have been doing this for quite a few years. And this year we are doing it at Fish Mountain Cemetery, which is located off of at the dead end of Fish Mountain Road Uh, (laughs) off of Route 8 which is located in Lake Pleasant uh, just between Speculator and Pasico. Yeah uh, for those in the know you go if you're coming from Speculator you go past the golf course you're gonna go down a hill and you'll see a sign for Fish Mountain Road then you take that all the way to the end and you will get to the cemetery. If you're coming from Pasico, um, it'll actually behoove you to go to Tamarack Tamarack. Road. Then you'll go to a Four Corners, you take a left, and you'll be right there. Yes, right at the end of the road. Now, who is buried at cemetery? Like, who famous is buried at the cemetery that you know of? Oh, wow. Well, of course, there's the Fish family. They are the Otis family that is buried at the cemetery. Uh, But I don't want to give too many names because uh, I don't want to give away uh, the surprising on who we're going to be learning about at the cemetery. Oh, so will there be ghosts about? Well, that's a good question. Um, Well, actually, at these cemetery tours, there will be people portraying those who are buried there. And you'll be uh, following a guide through the cemetery and he'll be taking you from one tombstone to the next and at every tombstone that he takes you there'll be a person who is dressed up as that character who is buried there and they will portray that character give you a little history but every year we do have a certain ghost who follows us to all the cemeteries we go to it is a famous local ghost. Can you guess who this ghost is? Oof. Famous ghost. Usually, I'd have to go with French Louis. No, not Because he's usually Louis. he's usually on the top of the list of famous uh, characters around here. The Rylander ghost, of course, is always a favorite. But I don't think she wants to stray too far from the... Well, actually, it is Mary Rylander. Oh, my goodness. Mary Rylander uh, visits us at every single cemetery tour. So we have her there, and people like to take selfies with Mary Rylander. Is she looking for a new uh, boyfriend? To... No, no, she's not looking for a new husband. No, um, no, no, she just follows about um, because she is a famous legend and because we always had the cemetery tour near Halloween um, it is very appropriate to have her uh, this year it'll be on October 20th October 20th 2018 now where are some other tours that you have done throughout the years well we always do a roundabout every year and when we first started these cemetery tours it was at the speculator cemetery behind Charlie John's store. From Speculator, we go to Fish Mountain. From Fish Mountain, we go to Airdville Cemetery. And then from Airdville Cemetery, we go to South Shore Cemetery. And then from South Shore Cemetery, we go right back to uh, Speculator uh, Cemetery. So we've done a full circle and we've started 
uh, last year at the Speculator, and this year we're back at Fish Mountain. Now, I have never actually been to the South Shore Road Cemetery. I've been on South Shore Road, mm -hmm. but I don't think I've ever seen the cemetery. It is a uh, town-owned cemetery, so it is publicly uh, used, and people can be buried there. It is actually a very nice cemetery. It's actually one of the oldest cemeteries of our region. Uh, in fact, it's probably one of the oldest in Hamilton County. Uh, next to um, Hope and Wells. Uh, so um, it is a very nice cemetery. It's, it's just off the road. You don't see it unless you look for it. But once you find it, you should take a visit. It is a beautiful location. Yep. Uh, does anyone do the Wells Cemetery uh, down the one on Route 30 there? You know, that is a very interesting uh, thing uh, to talk about. Rumor has it, and it's only a rumor, that Wells might be starting their own cemetery tours because they really enjoyed ours. And they have asked us in the past, the Historical Society of Lake Pleasant Speculator, to help. And we are very happy to help them, uh, to help them start their own tours when they are, are ready to do so. Oh, that'd be excellent because that seems like such a vast uh, cemetery there, right off Route 30. Well, they have more than one cemetery down in Wells. Mm -hmm. And not just that, their history is very much connected to our history. So that would be very interesting to visit. That it would be. Now, when people come to the cemetery tour, are there things they should be bringing with them? Yes, we, well, every, we seem, there seems to be a curse on the cemetery tours, and that's the weather. Though last year it was perfect, it was perfect weather, but in the past it always was snowing or it was raining. So we do advise people to, when they come, to wear warm clothing, bring an umbrella, and bring a lantern or a flashlight. But if you do have a nice lantern that can be used, use that first because it really brings the effect of going back in time. Yeah, I still have my lantern from when I was Cal Wilbur in the 4th of July parade. That was, what, two years ago? Oh, wow, really? Yeah. I, I still like using that. It, it does provide that ambiance that the Adirondacks provide. Yes, very nice effect. Um, I know that the Almanac this year has uh, forecasted early snow for this area. Oh dear. So, I would suggest getting that warm clothes ready for the cemetery tour. What is so amazing is that despite the weather, we've always had a large amount of people come and visit our cemetery tour. And it keeps growing every year. It's really amazing. And this year, um, there are quite a few people that are interested in coming on to this tour. Yeah, and we're all, and it's just the beginning of October, so plenty of time for you to get ready for this uh, particular tour. Now, is this type of tour for everyone of all ages? It's family friendly, and it's not a scary tour to go on. Um, the only thing that's scary is that you're going into a cemetery. <laughs> but other than that, it is a very family friendly tour. You're basically meeting people in the past and learning about their lives. And these are all kinds of people. They are uh, people who had great influence in our local communities. And there are people that to us would seem like nobody, but when you learn about their lives, you actually learn a little bit of how life was like back then. Now, I myself have a uh, few relatives who are buried at this particular cemetery. Is there any worry about any sort of vandalism or anything of that sort when you're going through these tours? Absolutely not. In fact, safety are in numbers. We very strongly respect the people who are buried at these cemeteries. We do encourage people not to step uh, in certain areas to respect those who are buried. And when we portray the characters, we always try to respect the people whom we are portraying, as well as the tombstones that uh, they uh, that 
speak of these people. There was one year, actually at Fish Mountain Cemetery, someone had spread the ashes of a loved one there, and we actually had to encourage people to walk in a certain location to respect the remains of those who were spread. Well, that's very good that uh, respect and safety are on the top of your list, along with the enjoyment and entertainment of a cemetery tour. And that's why we have people uh, to uh, be tour guides, so that when you're following that tour guide, uh, you won't trip over anything, and uh, you would know which direction you're supposed to be going. And that's why you need to bring a lantern or a flashlight. Now, speaking of tour guides, are you looking for volunteers for uh, this particular event? We are always looking for volunteers. <laughs> we are looking for people who are willing to betray those who are buried in the cemetery. And to do that, all you have to do is contact Ann Weaver, our town historian, and her phone number is 518-548-8300. And she will send you uh, information of a person that you can portray. And if you're willing, you can also dress up as that character. And we might even have some clothing you may want to borrow. You don't have to dress up, but it does help bring in the atmosphere of whom you're portraying. We are also are looking for people to guide uh, those through the cemetery. Last year, we had um, around, I believe it was around 70 people who came on the tour. That's a lot. And as a result, we're beginning to realize we're going to have to split the groups up. Because when you have that many people around someone who's portraying a character, it's hard to hear them. So we're trying to uh, shrink the amount of groups uh, to go through the tour. And we'll, so we're going to need more than one tour guide. Yeah, I was about to ask if there are, if it, there's just one big tour, or if you go on many, many separate tours. Yes, we may have to do it this year so that there will be more than one tour. Uh, in fact, we'll have one group go first, and then we'll have another group follow. I personally think a smaller group might add to the spookiness you don't have that many people to uh, defend you from the ghosts. Oh, oh is that it? Okay. <laughs> okay. I see where you're going here. Uh, uh. <laughs> now, um, if there, for volunteers, if there's someone at the cemetery that they would like to portray that may not be on uh, Mrs. Weaver's list, would that be okay? Um, absolutely. Uh, as long as they have the histor historical research or they know the person whom they're portraying that is buried there at the cemetery, that is acceptable. Just as long as you let Mrs. Weaver know and that um, she is okay with it. We do try to um, portray people who have been uh, passed away quite a long time ago. Like probably, I don't know, probably like over uh, 20 years. Yeah, so uh, as I know that you and I are both actors and we love uh, to act. Amateurs. We're amateurs. amateurs. I, <laughs> I do not. I think I think myself as a professional thespian. Oh, okay. okay. Thespian. That's the word I use. Um, what are your favorite portrayals that you have done over the years? Wow. Uh, my number one favorite is the same person whom I'm hoping to portray this year at Fish Mountain Cemetery that I did last time and that was um, a fish and he died at Fort Erie uh, during the War of 1812 but I'm not going to give any more away okay okay keep the secret um, have you done any other portrayals at the other cemeteries at, that you can talk about? At every cemetery I had the honor of portraying a character um, at Speculator I portrayed uh, uh, Mr. Slack, who owns Slack's store at the four corners of Speculator. Um, I portrayed uh, at Fish Mount, uh, sorry, at Airdeville. 
uh, Mr. Aird, who was from Scotland, and he was one of the jailers at the Hamilton County Jail. That was very interesting. Uh, character to portray uh, and so yeah I portrayed quite a few uh, and they were all fantastic because each one had their own story their own history and their own character and it's fun that when you learn about a person and uh, and the more that you learn about them the more you learn about their history where they're from it's like the character starts to do develop yeah, that is a difficult thing when you t go through a cemetery and sometimes you get caught up in just names and numbers yeah. and not the person behind it. So a tour like this, to me, is very important in being able to to show that, that they are just more than the name and the numbers, that there was a real person who had a real life and real experiences that uh, tell an amazing story. Uh, absolutely. Everybody has a story, uh, and again, it doesn't matter if you were a famous person or, or even to our modern culture way of thinking, you were a nobody. Everybody has a story, and it's amazing because uh, Ann Weaver, she would sometimes take you to cemeteries of, of characters whom nobody can portray, and these are people who, um, who died at a very young age. And she will talk about diseases or situations that in the past people had to go through that um, and the reasons why they passed away. There are some very sad stories and there's some very happy stories in these cemeteries. And you get to learn them all and there's some valuable lessons as well when you learn about these people. Yeah, you are definitely bringing history alive as to say. Literally. <laughs> well, <laughs> literally in a cemetery. Yeah. Um, so, why are there ghosts every time? <laughs> I hear that I hear there are ghosts. Or like there's a particular ghost that likes to just kind of uh, follow the the crowd around. Oh, I I never heard that. Uh, I I guess that's a rumor that I've never experienced. Oh, maybe, maybe. Well, maybe someone will see a ghost. Maybe. maybe. So, sometimes I wonder who's in the crowd. You never know. Uh, <laughs> Uh, who's who's watching as you go tour through? It, it might even be a character that I'm portraying that that's watching. Me. I hope I do it right. I, it, I don't want to get any of the uh, the uh, dead um, upset. No. You know though, uh, at cemeteries though, um, this is my personal opinion. Uh, there aren't as many ghosts in cemeteries as there would be in other locations because you see where you find a a. Um, unrest spirit is where that person passed away mm -hmm. and uh, not very people would pass away in a cemetery so a lot of grave diggers ghosts <laughs> either great or or you know there are uh, known in history of people who actually do die in their own coffin because uh, a lot of people back then uh, year years ago um, you know, they, they may not have been really dead. Yep, that's why I want a bell. If anyone's listening, yeah. I want a bell attached to my coffin in case <laughs> I'm not dead. And I can try to ring for help. Oh, don't worry. N nowadays, we, we know for sure if the person's passed away <laughs> before they are buried. But yes, you're right. In the, back, in the past, Victorian times, some tombstones would come with a bell. And that bell was hooked to uh, the, uh, the coffin. So that if a person's buried alive, they could ring the bell to have someone dig them up. Excellent. Now, my cousin Christopher is actually uh, going through a program in Oswego to become an undertaker. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Have you ever had uh, an undertaker or someone who works in that field come along on these tours? We have never had the privilege. It would be very interesting if we had an undertaker uh, who knows the history of that occupation uh, to uh, be on the tour or even be part of the tour because it would be nice to know uh, the history of what undertakers did. Yeah. If my cousin Chris is uh, uh, listening, I might kidnap you from Oswego for this tour. <laughs> <laughs> now, I know another tour 
that's not exactly a cemetery tour, but it's in the same line of uh, tours, is the Rhinelander tour. Mm. That's very, very popular. Where uh, Mary Ly- Rhinelander yep. had passed away. Yes, our very famous uh, local ghost in the Adirondacks. Um, we try to have that every other year. So probably we won't have it next year, but we did have it this year. Mm-hmm. And uh, yes, uh, that's a very famous tour. The best person to give that tour is... Uh, Mr. McComb, uh, he is. He seems to know the area very well. So if you're able to contact him, I'm sure he might be willing to give some private tours during the summer. You can always ask him. Now, if I remember correctly, it's down Elm Lake Road, and then there's one of the blue historical signs. Yes, exactly on the side it, of the road. It's about two. I, I'm guessing it's about two miles or more from the Four Corners of Speculator, and you have to follow it, uh, even uh, past Kunjima Cave. Uh, just keep following Elm Lake Road until you, like you said, you see the historical marker. The ruins or the foundation, what we believe is the Rhinelanders Mansion, is located right behind the historical marker. Now, the people on Daklin Radio, they know uh, of the gentleman, Old Man of the Adirondacks. Uh, he invited me at one point to camp out a night at the Rylander Estate. Wow. And um, I told him I did on the condition that I uh, signed my life insurance the day before. <laughs> I, I, am, I am super scared of stuff like that. Especially knowing uh, the old man, he would mess with me so bad. Like I'm trying to sleep, and then the tent just starts moving. And well, well, the history of Mary Rylanders and the Washerwoman's and the Peddler's Ghost—they um, have never really ever harmed anybody. They've only spooked people. And you know, a ghost is only um, its character. The the unrested spirit is is of their life. And of course, Mary Rylander. That's a very sad story, and every time when I go to Rylander's uh, estate and go to the ruins, I always feel a, how do I put it, a power, a uh, a form of sadness. Like a depression, almost? Almost, yeah, very much of a depression. And every time when we leave, and this has happened many times, uh, I would... I would go in my parents' four-wheel tr- drive truck because of the rough roads. And every time when I leave, the wheels would start spinning and there would be no reason to do so. And, and, or, or sometimes even the car refused to start at first. And I was like, why is this doing this? And then I begin to realize, well, maybe it's just Mary Rylander asking you to stay a little longer to visit her because she is lonely. She's She was lonely when she was alive there, and maybe her spirit is lonely as well. Oh, now you make me want to go on a camping trip. Now, now I feel bad. <laughs> I feel bad about not having gone this summer, but it is something that we have we planned on doing maybe uh, next summer. Mm. trying to do something like that. Let me know if you guys do. I might be interested in joining. Oh, good. The, the more numbers, the, the, <laughs> the more sacrifices we can make. Well, historically, after the founda- after the mansion was burnt down, people did camp within the ruins of the, um, of the mansion. So that would be a neat tradition to keep going. And none of them were ever heard from again. No, they, they were always <laughs> heard of. Shush! It makes it more exciting that way. <laughs> Though there were claims. Uh, some campers did see some of the bricks uh, float uh, when yep. they were camping there. And they did see the ghost, a ghost coming from uh, Elm Lake going up through the woods toward the uh, mansion. We believe that's the uh, washerwoman because that's where she drowned. Her body was found was down in Elm Lake. Oh, boy. A lot to unpack is there. And maybe we'll have to get our own interview uh, just on that. Yeah. All right. Yeah, now, there's a lot of history there. All right. So once again, what is the date and time of the cemetery tour? The cemetery tour is at Fish Mountain Road, located off the dead end of Fish Mountain off Route 8. It will be October the 20th. It's a Saturday. It will be at 7 p.m. 
try to be there at least uh, 10 minutes earlier. Yep. And uh, once again, if you're coming in from Speculator, the best way to get there is to go past the golf course. You're going to go down a hill, and you'll see a sign that says Fish Mountain Road. Then you just follow the main road. Don't go off any of the other side roads. Just follow the main road. You get to a four corners, go straight. You'll go right to the end of the cemetery. If you're coming from Paseco Way, uh, the best way to get there is to go down Tamarack Road. And then you take a left at the four corner uh, place into the cemetery. Not to mistake it with the four corners that is famously here in Speculator. <laughs> yeah. And remember to bring warm clothing and uh, an umbrella or maybe a poncho, anything to keep yourself dry just in case it rains. And also bring a lantern first. And if you don't have a lantern, bring a flashlight. And bring friends and family. This is a family-friendly event. Kids love this. We've had kids that would sit down on the ground in front of the, portray of the uh, people who are portraying those who are buried there, and it's like story time. They're learning a story of that person's life. Yes, yeah, very, very, very historical and very good time. Now, the museum itself, are you still open right now? Uh, to uh, The museum is open to the public, but only by appointment now. You may want to call uh, Ann Weaver or Shorty Hoffman. Um, I don't have their number on me right now, okay. but uh, you can find information on our website, which is uh, lakespec at wordpress.com. Yep. Or you can just Google um, Lake Pleasant History. It'll take you right to our, to our website. Yep, and I also know you have a Facebook page, a uh, Lake Pleasant Historical Facebook page, which will have this information on it as well. Yes, we do. Um, and, and then you can reserve your spot and tell people you're interested. Not, not that you're interested, that you're going. Yes. Hit the going button. Don't yes. hit the interested look, button. Look for go. Our, absolutely. Look for our events on Facebook. Uh, it, it would be called Cemetery Tour, mm -hmm. and you can find it under uh, the historic, uh, Lake Pleasant Historical uh, Facebook page or under Historical Society of Lake Pleasant and Speculator on Facebook. And already we have um, over 80 people who are interested in coming to this event. I, I know, it, it's, it's growing every year. People really love this. In fact, I've had some local people saying that they are staying in Speculator in Lake Pleasant until after this event because they've really enjoyed it or they wanted to come and see oh, it. That is amazing. Yeah. Now, speaking of events, you guys just had Apple Fest. Yeah. Um, I was there uh, with Daclan Radio. Uh, watching and playing music, and it looked like a rousing success. In That's my eyes. growing every year too. It's it's amazing uh, how much of that event is growing, and basically it's just uh, we just started it uh, many years ago. The historical society did, and it was just uh, it was a an event that was to replace. Uh, the uh, fall fest that we used to have here in our community mm -hmm. and we thought well let's bring uh, instead of calling it the fall fest in respect just in case it comes back we'll call it the apple fest and it ha and, and people have been coming it's been growing every year we have vendors we have uh, free pumpkins for kids to uh, color um, and keep for themselves uh, there is music there is you can watch people or get involved with helping to make cider with a cider press. Oh, uh, that always interests me seeing uh, your family do the cider press. The Weaver family, yeah. The Weaver family doing the cider press because it feels like you're going back because you're doing it in the older style. It, it brings in the atmosphere. And it tastes wonderful. Oh, it does it taste It tastes really wonderful. Good. Apple cider tastes wonderful. The real thing. The real thing. The real thing. The real thing. But yeah. Um, that was, but like I said, it seemed like a rousing, so we, there was barely any parking spots left. It was okay. just everybody, everybody who was anybody was there. We always have it the same uh, day as the Moose Fest. And last year, the Moose Fest was like, we need to know when you're having it because every time we have it at the same time, we get to, we get a lot of people that come up. 
So it's great because you have the Moose Fest, you have the Apple Fest, and there's another event too that's happening at the same time. So I can't remember uh, what. There was a recovery walk in Wells. Oh, okay. Yep, that was at the same. That was the same day as well. So there was all these three things that pe that families could go to throughout the entire day. So it was it was great. Yeah, I always love seeing uh, events like this that can bring the whole family out because mm. some people, as not, I don't, I don't want to see a complaint, but some people say that there's not a lot to do around here. But events like this keep people interested. They keep people doing stuff, and it's a lot of fun. It is a lot of fun. I wish I wish it was possible for more events to to be done in our area. Unfortunately, there's not enough people to do them, and not enough time for those few enough people to do them. Yeah. Well, it's hard to find volunteers nowadays. Just overall, being that mm -hmm. a lot of us have to have one to two jobs just to, uh, you know, live. And mm -hmm. there's when you uh, have free time, the last thing you want to do is work some more. I know. I know. And and you know, uh, us uh, people who are us that live here year round. Uh, basically, our vacation time is either the spring or the fall. Mm -hmm. It's the only time that we actually have time to go out and enjoy ourselves. <laughs> kind of de decompress a little from the summer. Yeah. And then and then expect the snowmobilers in the winter. Oh, and you know, I heard this winter is going to be an interesting winter. Like I said, it's supposed to be early. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to be heavy. Oh and it's supposed to be great. Oh, yes. So if, if you're listening to this uh, radio station, you have a snowmobile, or you like to snowshoe, or cross country, or even just ski, I think this you, this winter is going to be quite a wonderland. Excellent. I don't want to promise too much in case it doesn't happen, because I, I, don't, I don't need people coming at my house with pitchforks and torches, because <laughs> I predicted a good winter. You never know. Every year is, is quite a surprise. All right. Is there anything else you want to talk about before we go off? No, uh, probably okay. probably just one more thing is uh, membership for the Historical Society. Um, we are accepting people to pay their dues for next year's membership. Uh, it's ten dollars for adults, one dollar for students, and it's a hundred dollars for lifetime membership. And this money helps uh, the Historical Society to bring about these events for the public. Yes. Yeah, so, join the Historical Society. I know. I'm part of the Historical Society. I don't make any of their meetings, but I am on paper. And, <laughs> I, and I, th I do thoroughly enjoy all the events they put on. And bringing to life this, the very interesting and, albeit sometimes weird, <laughs> history of Lake Pleasant. We, we do have a unique history here. Yeah, we do. And we love every second of it. So, uh, Aaron Weaver and Gary Reinhardt. This is Heart to Heart with Gary Reinhardt, and I hope to see you guys next time.